I don't know about you, but I still hear this all the time. Uh, the claim that higher bit depth digital audio files have better resolution than lower bit depths. 24 bit sounds better than 16 bit and 16 bit sounds better than 8 bit because they have better resolution. I mean, it seems to make sense because uh, the more bits you have, the more detail you can use to record the, the changes in voltage in the audio signal, so the better quality you should get, right? Well, actually, no, it's not correct. The only difference between a low bit depth file and a high bit depth file, if you do it right, is that the low bit depth file will have more noise. Now, that probably sounds counterintuitive if you haven't come across it before, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the difference. Um, I think it's important because people use this as uh, to claim that digital audio can never sound as good as analog because you can never have an infinite bit depth file to get infinite resolution in the file. But I'm going to show you that's not necessary. And to do that, I've got a beautiful 24-bit recording from a project I mastered a few years ago. It's a fantastic tune by Tia Aeolas called Morven Larry, and I've also created an 8-bit version. This is an extreme case, but hopefully you'll find it convincing. So let's listen to the 24-bit version, and then I'll flick across to the 8-bit version so you can hear the difference. So as I said, there's lots more noise in the 8-bit version. But listen to what happens if I play them both at the same time with the polarity inverted on the 24-bit version. All we can hear is noise. If I mute the 8-bit version again... What's happening, of course, is that the inverted waveform is cancelling with the original copy, and anything that's the same between those two files is disappearing. But the thing that's disappearing is the music, and all we're left with is the hiss. And that means that the music signal contained in these two files is identical, even though one of them is only 8-bit. And I can just confirm for you that's the case, by playing back the 8-bit version on its own, and we look at the bit scope over here. Whereas, in comparison with the 24-bit version, but the music cancels completely. The resolution of the audio signal doesn't depend on the bit depth. All that changes is the noise floor. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this only works if you do it right. And that means that I have dithered the 8-bit version. Dither is artificial noise that's added before you truncate down to the lower bit depth. It randomizes the quantization error and makes sure that all we lose is signal-to-noise ratio. And that's crucial. Let me show you what happens if you don't use dither. Just a reminder, here's the beginning of the 8-bit dithered version. And here's the same thing without dither. I think the distortion there is obvious, and in that case, we can agree that some resolution of the file has been lost. But only because we didn't do it right. Only because we didn't use dither. And just in case you're wondering, 
here is what a perfect null test looks like. Here I have exactly the same file, and you'll notice when I unmute the version with the polarity inverted, we'll see nothing on the bit scope showing a perfect null, meaning that the two pieces of audio are identical. Now, of course, the 8-bit version was exaggerated. Nobody in their right mind uses 8-bit audio these days. Um, so just let me play you the 16-bit equivalent. So here we have the 24-bit file nulling against the 16-bit dithered version. And actually, the cancellation in this case is so complete that we can't hear the result of the null test. So over here, I have a version where I've exported that and boosted it by... 60 dBs. And again, you can hear nothing but hiss. Whereas if we listen to the end of the truncated 16-bit version with lots of gain, you can hear some of those same truncation problems. And that's why when people ask me how they should use dither, I always recommend to use dither when you're exporting to a fixed bit depth. It doesn't matter to me whether it's 16-bit or 24-bit. Whether you'll hear the differences or not depends on the material, but it's the right thing to do. By using dither, you preserve every last detail of the music at the expense of adding a little bit of noise. But at 16-bit, and especially at 24-bit, that noise is going to be so quiet that it's not going to have any impact on the quality, whereas the distortion you get from truncating without dither just might. So to recap, higher bit depth audio doesn't have higher resolution than lower bit depths. It just has a lower noise floor. Here's the 24-bit audio file. And here's the 8-bit. Clearly, it has more noise, but when we null test, we can hear that it's only noise. The music signal is preserved. So there you go. Hopefully that was helpful or interesting and shed a bit more light on the topic of bit depth versus resolution. Um, and in particular, reassured you that there is no limitation on the quality that digital audio can achieve if you have a high enough sampling rate and a high enough bit depth to get the noise floor down low enough you can record with any quality you like and capture all the magic of the original audio signal if you enjoyed this video uh, head over to productionadvice.co.uk where there are plenty more along these lines and several blog posts on dither um, you might also like to listen to the podcast the Mastering Show, which you can find at themasteringshow.com on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.